न्यूजीलैंड डिड इट देन रोल्ड इट बैक नाउ द यूके इज प्लानिंग टू इफेक्टिवली बैन स्मोकिंग प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऋषि सुनक वॉन्ट्स टू प्लेस रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन द सेल ऑफ सिगरेट्स इन द यूके राधर देन द एक्ट ऑफ स्मोकिंग इट सेल्फ under the new law each year the legal age for cigarette sales which is currently 18 will increase by one year it means that people born in or after 2009 will never be able to legally buy cigarettes leading to an effective ban now mps have voted to back the government's plans to create a smoke free generation and reduce the number of smoking related deaths the law will not affect those who are allowed to buy cigarettes now to crack down on underage sales the uk government says it will introduce 100 pounds on the spot fines for shops in england and wales which sell tobacco and vapes to underage people now this would be on top of the 2500 pound fines that courts can already impose the government says it will spend 30 million pounds on enforcement of the law which will include tackling the availability of cigarettes on the black mark The government aims to have the new system in force by 2027. But critics of the new law say that there should be freedom of choice and that a ban won't have much impact on reducing the harmful effects of smoking. So how is this really panning out? Let's understand from the citizens themselves joining me on the broadcast. Dr. Yukteswar Kumar, Deputy Chairperson of the Conservative Party is joining us. Uh, good evening namaskar dr kumar i'm also joined by zeba sheik she's a marketing consultant she's joining us live from london zeba thank you very much for joining us on mirror now in fact let me start with you zeba and try to understand the situation that prevails there uh, the government is planning to ban uh, the sale of cigarettes there how much of a challenge is it there among youngsters in the uk and how has their response been to this plan by the government Uh, thank you so much Shreya, for having me uh so it is definitely quite a bit of a challenge uh it is a very nice thing that the government is trying to do but in terms of effectiveness it might not be very effective because when you try and ban something outright it just increases the demand for it per se so the youth in london per se is not the most happy with it because they are looking for other ways to procure the goods which leads into a whole different market being risen now. Hmm. Dr. Kumar, you want to respond to that uh, you know the fact that anything that's banned might lead to the illegal market for that product in this case of course uh, the UK government is planning the sale of cigarettes uh, but clearly uh, I mean how, how much do you think how much do you gauge the impact would be on the ground? Oh Uh, banning something like we have seen even in india for example alcohol in some states that leads to nourishing and uh, uh, in fact mushrooming if i may use the word of black markets now uh, that might mushroom but british government uh, is uh, very very stern and uh, there will be 100 pound which means about uh, 11000 rupees of fine on the spot for anybody indulging in that kind of activities apart from that there is obviously 2500 pounds of fine uh, by the local government uh, mind you i was in the local government uh, very recently uh, being the deputy mayor of the city of bath and we uh, for any kind of this kind of thing so 2500 pounds will go uh, to the local uh, budget uh, and the local government so these are the stern hmm. and uh, very uh, excellent uh, kind of measures which will combat the black marketing things uh but this is a certainly a very very important but, but at this point can i also ask you dr kumar you know new zealand had this law then they rolled it back uh, and the and the reason that the government cited was that it will scrap the law to help fund tax cuts uh how does the uk government plan to do because clearly there are there is a lot of money involved as well uh in the tobacco industry certainly uh, there there is uh, a lot of money involved in tobacco industry and i'm sure uh, in india as well uh, quite a lot of taxes generated uh, because of sale of 
liquor and uh, and uh, and obviously uh, tobacco uh, so it be but please mind you that uk is a welfare state our nhs budget is almost 189 billion or let's say 225 billion us dollar and because of tobacco deaths every year uk government or nhs waste i will say waste about 2.4 billion pounds 2.4 billion pounds is quite a lot of money and if people do not die for example 80000 mind you 80000 people in the uk die because of tobacco and smoking in the world that is about 100 times more 8 million people in the world die because of smoking and tobacco related deaths now even hmm. if there is a little bit sure. of less uh, income but if expenditure is also less on NHS, then we are in benefit and everybody is fine because uh, health is wealth. You wanted to speak, Sreya. Uh, Zeba, let me ask you then, um, you know, everybody knows about it. Everybody advertises about the harmful effects of smoking. But, uh, uh, you know, how much of that, of, of, of an impact does it have around you? Do you see your friends being affected by it? Does it change anything? Uh, do laws like this impact the psychology that people have behind smoking at all? Well, of course. Uh, I uh, certainly, because I studied that. Uh, Dr. Kumar, New, this was Jawala for Zeba. Nehru. I'll come to you. Okay. This was for Zeba. Okay. Yeah, Thank Zeba, so go much. ahead. Uh, it really does affect the psychology of people to an extent, but not that much. Uh, as I said before, when you put a ban on something, it just makes it more desirable. All my friends uh, in the UK are currently smokers. They abide by the rules of places where you cannot smoke, but they are smokers. And this ban doesn't really affect them per se. But I can see it from a younger generation's point of view of you are trying to get younger generations to stop smoking. But they do have elder siblings, elder friends, people on the street. It is just going to lead into hmm. another market that we cannot, um, in a sense, we, we, we cannot see that not happening. It is going to happen. You, they are going to find a way. Yeah, you know, because uh, something that the Tory MP also said on BBC was it does make smoking more cooler, air quotes. It does make it a lot more cooler. So it is going to have a lot of problem for the UK authorities as a whole. Hmm. Uh, you know, Dr. Kumar, Zeba is right in saying when she says that, uh, you know, this might have an impact, but there are other outlets. You can ban it for uh, people with a certain age. But of course, they have their elder siblings. They have adults uh, from whom they can access. So it brings you back to the pavilion. It brings you back to ground zero. Uh, I beg to differ because uh, uh, as uh, a government, uh, as a sensible government, uh, a local government or the central government, they have a duty to protect the health. Uh, and what you can do uh, as a legislature, for example, uh, what will the MPs uh, do? Obviously, they will put a good legislation, and this, in my opinion, is a very good legislation. Mind you, even the United Nations and World Health Organization, they had in 2003 uh, uh, a, a, a protocol uh, it was called uh, WHO, uh, Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, WHO FCTC. So government and uh, senior or uh, responsible organizations, they need uh, to uh, impose mm. these kind of rules and regulations. Uh, unfortunately, by the way, WHO, uh, this uh, protocol uh, was not ratified by the United Nations States, uh, one of the bigger countries in the world, uh, which is to some extent very simple. It has been signed by them now in 2022, but it has not ratified by the United States. 183 countries have ratified and signed. Uh, there are obviously more than 200 countries in the world. Now, my point is the government cannot remain a MOOC spectator. And I am very proud of the fact I can see Rishi Sunak, uh, our leader on your uh, our, our TV screen, 
that he uh, bring uh, brought uh, this uh, legislation and that has been passed uh, last night by the House of Commons. Uh, I am also uh, very unhappy and regret that some of the uh, Tory uh, members uh, uh, of my own party, as well as from Liberal Democrats, in fact, all the Liberal Democrats, uh, the nine of them, they decided uh, not to even vote. Uh, how can we protect the future, the health of a nation? Well, well some of your critics also health... say, Dr. Kumar, that there should be freedom of choice, that instead of a complete ban, there should be a freedom of choice and there should be guidelines and directions in place and a person should be able to make his or her own choice. Well, uh, of course, for, uh, if, if you say freedom of choice, then many things are banned in many states and there are many things, uh, for example, drugs are banned in many, class drugs are banned in many countries. Of course, there are some countries which allow. Now, for any state and any responsible government, it is important to think of what are the pros and cons. I do not buy the argument at all, at all, that uh, there should be a freedom of, of choice for uh, eating poison, for example. Uh, this each poisonous, uh, remember, tobacco leads to carbon monoxide, late, L-E-A-D, and many other harmful things. Sure. Government has responsibility, and it is very important that UK is leading. It is the first country in the world, as you rightly said, that New Zealand had adopted this, but they repealed it. That was, uh, in my opinion, not correct. And uh, Britain is leading, yes. which is a very, very good thing. Well, I think every country thinks for itself. New Zealand tried it and they couldn't work it out. Uh, but Zeba, let me get in a quick last word from you and then we wrap this up. Uh, if not a ban, a complete ban, what do you think can actually help youngsters from, uh, you know, if the governments can actually reach out to youngsters to prevent them from smoking and make them understand the harmful effects of smoking? part in it because they're looking at changing the packaging of cigarettes and vapes as well which really hasn't done much because we've seen the gory packaging on cigarettes and everybody still continues smoking and so education plays a big big yes. part on trying to stop the younger generation from going into habits like these and also when it uh i i was listening to dr hmm. kumar's what he had to say just a quick point in that of the whole freedom of uh the whole freedom of choice uh, you're you're looking at banning cigarettes now, which is something that is definitely very harmful. But then so is alcohol. Are we looking at banning alcohol next? Pork is bad as well. Are we going to look at banning that as well? Where does it start and where does it stop? Where does the, you know, the line, where is the line in this? Hmm. All, all right. All right, we'll leave it there. Uh, Zeba, thank you very much for joining us. And Dr. Kumar, thank you very much to you as well for joining us on the broadcast. We'll of course have to see how it works out for the UK but for now we have the precedent of uh, New Zealand where it did not work out but of course there are countries like Singapore which do have strict guidelines in place when they serve alcohol to youngsters. We'll have to see whether it works out in the UK and whether India follows suit next. Uh, but that's a long way to go. Thank you very much to both of you for joining us on the broadcast and sharing your perspective. Thank you very much.